folks Ty metalhead weatherman here hopefully everybody's doing well well so as you can see my bed is not made because i literally got up first thing this morning and my spidey senses were tingling or maybe you can call them weather senses uh make a name in the comments but in any case i had a feeling this was gonna happen we were gonna get an enhanced risk today but we also got one for tomorrow so we're going to quickly go over those because I don't have a lot of time before work. So let's get this rolling really quickly here. The main threat for today is actually hail. We still have that hatched risk in the 15% wind area over towards Des Moines now included in it, along with Omaha, Lincoln, and Norfolk, Nebraska. This even tries to sneak its way into southwestern parts of Minnesota here. Again, like I said before, the hail threat is the main threat, especially as we go further off to the east here. It looks like poor old Iowa is going to get hit pretty hard again with storms, it looks like. Tornado threat has fortunately not been upgraded. There is a chance that it may get upgraded later in the day. Typically with these threats, we usually will see a upgrade if we're going to see it probably later in the afternoon. And I think the greatest point of interest in regards to that would kind of be more over towards this region around the central part of the risk, maybe a little further to the south here. Like I said, uptrending is still possible with this. We saw a little bit of that last night right before I went to bed. So just have to keep an eye on that abysmal drawing. Anyway, that is the threat for today and then tomorrow here is the most recent upgrade the threat again is for hail we do have a hatch dress to go along with that that goes all the way into texas towards fort stockton but in either case hail's the main threat damaging winds are an elevated threat as well especially towards the kansas nebraska line interestingly enough which is where our series of short waves are going to, our large and powerful short wave is going to be, this is going to be the main catalyst behind our storms for tomorrow. Still have a 5% tornado threat area with this as well. Mainly centered around Kansas, but I do think there are a couple spots that we would need to watch, like the Panhandle, Oklahoma, and the Oklahoma, Kansas line are my favorite points of interest with this right now. So quick look at the models here. We're going to kind of put this into a loop and just kind of break things down as it goes. So as it stands right now, nothing's really changed from last night's video in regards to the trough for today. And then as we go into the following day, you can see this little branch of the trough breaks off here. We get our short waves that corresponds along with that. And that's our setup for Kansas. We do have this other little piece of trough that pops up over here towards Texas as we get into the day today and really more so tomorrow is when things get more pronounced with this and that's going to be our trigger for the setup on wednesday for texas you can see the short waves become a little bit more pronounced on here i'm going to move the loop just a little bit faster here but if you watch this area when we get into wednesday afternoon the short waves become a lot more clear i'm actually going to pause it right there right within this time frame which would be just a little bit after eight o'clock central time is when these short waves really begin to take off and this is when i think we'll expect some stronger storms especially towards kansas short wave did move a little further to the north towards the kansas nebraska line so that is partially what explains that increased threat of damaging winds over there then if we go ahead and take a look at our low level jet I want you to keep one thing in mind here. As we looked at the 500, we wanted winds coming out of the, maybe the southwest to northeast here. We do get a little bit of that when we get into the day tomorrow, especially towards that Oklahoma panhandle. We mainly have a lot of uh, west to east, but you want the low level jet to be going south to north like what we're seeing here. And even with today, there's a chance that we could get a few tornadoes to pop up here. I think it's going to be towards the early part of the event. Could be a couple spots of interest as we get towards sunset, but it's not going to be a long duration event. By the time the low level jet strengthens, 
I do think we're going to lose a lot of the instability that we would need to keep these storms going. In regards to tomorrow, it looks like we end up getting a near perfect uh, south and north setup here. And like I said, I really think towards that Kansas, Nebraska, uh, Oklahoma line is where we're going to have the greatest low level jet available. And it does start to strengthen around this time, too. So 50 knot low level jet. Usually you would look for about 30. Got what you need right here. Even though that this isn't the most impressive sounding that I've ever seen, this little loop here in the hodiograph, which we'll get into in a later video, look forward to that with uh, Kyle, but this loop right here where it goes almost into the vertical like this, and then the wind speeds kind of progress in this fashion here, it's definitely a sign for maybe some supercells possibly developing here and potentially even some uh, low precip supercells. So we could get some photogenic sunset tornadoes and maybe some nocturnal tornadoes, but at least they won't quite be as rain wrapped as what we were seeing this weekend. So now that we've looked at that, here's a look at our dew points. We can see pretty clearly that we're gonna have an abundant moist sector in the region for both today and tomorrow. It could be a slightly earlier initi initiation time than what we had talked about last night, but we'll have to see how things progress with that. And then, of course, on the following day, we see that moist sector push all the way into the Kansas-Nebraska line. Again, I think the most abundant moisture is going to be over towards East Kansas and parts of central Oklahoma. So I do think that with tomorrow's event, this could be a little bit more of a long duration thing and eventually even nocturnal. So let's go ahead and take a look at the surface temperatures. Not much has really changed with this. It's going to be hot across this region for both days. In particular for Wednesday, we'll see, plen we'll see plenty of 80s, maybe a couple of 90s towards Texas in particular. And you can even see some in Kansas, which is really impressive for this time of year. You don't normally see the 90s get this far out to the east this far, this uh, early on into the year. Usually you would have to wait till like about maybe mid to late May, but this year has been a rule breaker and it's going to continue to do so. So the next things we'll do is we'll look at a couple of quick parameters here. Start out with our mixed layer cape. This is showing how much instability we have in the atmosphere and it's abundant i mean it's it comes it's no surprise here we talked about it yesterday cape values are near 2300 to 2500 exactly what you would need for severe weather towards kansas the cape values are even more impressive and as far as the following day it's pretty much a similar deal 3000 close to even 4000 but the thing is like i said before we do start to lose some of that cape but not nearly enough for this to not end up being a nocturnal event. Still plenty of areas where we're at, at 2,000 plus joules per kilogram on Cape. And over towards Texas, it's pretty much the same thing. So definitely need to be keeping our eye out for the weather over the course of the next 48 hours here. So the next parameter we'll go ahead and take a look at is our lapse rates. This is a good, if you get steep lapse rates, the brighter the color. And the steeper the lapse rates, the greater the threat for hail. Usually uh, usually towards the mid-level lapse rates will really help a supercell vent if it's really steep. And we end up seeing exactly what we would be looking for by the time we're in the early afternoon. Storms will be taking advantage of that. And then as we go into the following day, we can see that already beginning to occur here. We're getting lapse rates nearing nine which is really impressive so whether we get tornadoes or not i would expect some big hail towards the oklahoma panhandle and of course over towards west central texas maybe even central texas to go along with this last thing we'll do and i hate using this one sometimes but do deem it necessary at the very least for wednesday maybe not so much today but it's the significant tornado parameter Keep in mind that with the significant tornado parameter, what we are looking for 
is these heightened numbers that are going to be near areas where we're expecting the severe weather. If you don't have a thunderstorm over this area, these numbers are relevant. Like, let's say if you're looking over towards the Gulf right here, you see this area in the blue offshore. It's irrelevant because I wouldn't expect much in the way of storms today. But you can see as we get later into the afternoon, you get some increased numbers over here. Again, towards Kansas is where I think that point of interest is going to be. Maybe a little sneaky spot in far southwestern Iowa, maybe even southern Iowa. But if I go ahead and click on this sounding here, we have those heightened numbers. What do you know? PDS tour. This is where we're expecting thunderstorms. So again, if you're over towards Can eastern Kansas, definitely be keeping an eye on the weather and staying weather aware today. So lastly, we're going to go to Wednesday and then also take a look at our simulated radar. And you can even see it early in the day. And I really do think the threat has kind of shifted more to the north now. We pretty much have a really imp a really similar but really more impressive look i would say for tomorrow than we do today there are some questions that i do have over towards kansas and that's going to be with a potential cap here which is represented by inhibition here we do see another little piece of evidence right here with the temperature inversion whenever you see temperature kind of bow out to the right here at the surface that's usually a sign that we might be struggling with a little cap here. If these storms can already get established, the cap becomes irrelevant. But if I look at all the other numbers on here, such as shear, for example, telltale sign that we have a environment that is conducive to spin. And then the energy in the atmosphere, we don't really need to talk about it. We already know the deal there. But that's pretty much what we're looking at for both days as of right now. We'll go ahead and take a look at what our radar could look like from this point and we'll go on from that point also another couple things to make note of southeast can expect some showers and storms this afternoon and increasing coverage of it as we head into the afternoon and evening our severe weather threat really looks like it starts to take off just a little bit after mid-afternoon so i would say more or less around maybe four five ish i would say and like i said toward the further we get towards uh southern ellen southern iowa and also parts of missouri and kansas when we expect that threat to really ramp up a bit here don't expect this to necessarily be a long event then we get into wednesday it's really going to be more towards the back half of the evening here where we start to get those storms to fire. The strongest storms are really going to be a little bit after sunset, and that's when we're going to have to look out for some tornadoes here. These do have a discrete look to them, which is a bit concerning, so we'll be keeping an eye on that. But like I said, I mainly would favor Kansas for those storms to potentially spin towards the Oklahoma Panhandle. Again, is another point of interest. It's been a point of interest throughout the year. That trend continues. But that being said, hope you guys stay safe, stay weather aware. Make sure you hit that like button, have that notification bell on because we will be going live tonight. And then also the plan is to do the same tomorrow. So make sure you're staying tuned for that. Make sure you share the channel to see if we can't get to a thousand maybe by midsummer before hurricane season. But until then, everybody take care. Have an awesome rest of your day. I'll see you soon.